Assalamu alaikum boys and girls and welcome to story time with me, Sophia. Today we will be continuing our series on the stories of the companions of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. These were the people who interacted with the Prophet and learned from him directly. In this episode, we will be learning about Ikrama ibn Abi Jahal. Do you know who he is? He may not be one of the most known Sahabas, but trust me, you want to know who he is. Ikrama radiallahu anhu was almost 30 years old at the time the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam publicized his call to guidance and truth. At this time, Ikrama ibn Abi Jahal was held in high regard by the Quraysh, being wealthy and of noble lineage. Some others like him, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, Mus'ab ibn Umar, and the other sons of noble families in Mecca had become Muslims too. He knew he might have followed their example were it not for his father. Any guesses who his father was? Have any of you heard of Abu Jahal? Well, that was his father. Now let's take a moment to discuss his father and why he is so important. You see, Abu Jahal was one of the greatest tyrants of Mecca. He was ignorant and abusive and ruthless and mean. He was very, very mean. He hated Islam and he hated our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than anybody else. Through torture, he sorely tested the faith of the early believers, but they remained steadfast. He used every single trick in the book to make them waver, but they were still strong in their belief in Allah. Allah gave us the lesson of Abu Jahl during the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's time as an example. Do we have any Abu Jahls in our time? Are we constantly being attacked and insulted and abused? Are we dealing with not one but many Abu Jahls from the media to the politics to the people around us? And unfortunately, sometimes even our fellow Muslims. Allah is showing us that Abu Jahl did not accept the Muslims. So what makes you think that the Abu Jahls of today will? We must look at the steadfast determination of the Sahabas who suffered so much from Abu Jahl and Abu Lahab and other oppressors as lessons that we as Muslims can overcome anything and anyone once we have faith in Allah. Don't try to please them by belittling ourselves or distancing ourselves from what we know is right. The only one we need to please is Allah. If Allah says do what your mommies and daddies say, then do it. Allah does not say do anything to please mean nasty people like Abu Jahl. This is why the story of Ikrama radiallahu anhu is so important. Abu Jahl, the biggest enemy of Islam, was his father. Yet, somehow, even he was able to accept Islam and stay strong with his iman. He was under so much pressure, but yet, he still found a way to stay true to his deen. What's your excuse? Now this is a lesson not just for you boys and girls, but even your mommies and your daddies, or all the aunties and uncles who may be watching with you. SubhanAllah, a lesson for myself, first and foremost. Now Ikrama radiallahu anhu found himself defending the leadership and the authority of his father as he stood against the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in many battles. His animosity towards the Prophet, peace be upon him, and his persecution of his followers and his attempts to block the progress of Islam and the Muslims was much admired by his father. His father was so proud that his son followed in his evil footsteps, doing as he did, liking as he liked, and disliking who he disliked. At the Battle of Badr, Abu Jahl led the Meccan polytheists, the people that believed in idols and, and the disbelievers, in the battle against the Muslims. He swore by Allah and Al-Uzza, some of their many, many idols and gods, that he would not return to Mecca unless he personally crushed the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. 
At father, he sacrificed three camels to the goddesses. He drank wine and he had music of young girls to spur the Quraysh on to fight, fight, fight. But despite all his efforts, Abu Jahl was amongst the first to fall in battle. His son Ikrima saw him as spears pierced his body and he heard his father let out his last cry of agony as he passed away on the battlefield. Ikrima returned to Mecca, leaving behind the corpse of his father, their leader. He wanted to bury him in Mecca, but the crushing defeat they suffered made this impossible. Allah made the Muslims successful at the Battle of Badr a turning point in the spread of Islam as they fought against the Christ's believers. This was a very big milestone for the sake of Islam. From that day, the fire of hatred burned even more deeply and fiercely in the heart of Ikrimah. Those Muslims, those Muslims killed my father at the Battle of Badr. And he became even more hostile to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and his followers. This eventually led to the Battle of Uhud. And at Uhud, Ikrimah was accompanied by his wife, Um Hakim. She and other women stood behind the battle lines, beating their drums. One, two, one, two, fight, fight, fight. Urging the Quraysh on to battle and reprimanding any horseman who felt inclined to flee in fear. Leading the right side of the Quraysh army was Khalid ibn Walid. On the left was Ikrimah ibn Abi Jahl. The Quraysh inflicted heavy losses on the Muslims and felt that they had avenged themselves for their defeat at Badr. This was not, however, the end of the state of the conflict. At the Battle of the Ditch, the Quraysh surrounded Medina. <gasps> it was a long siege. The resources and the patience of the Mushrikun were wearing out. Ikrimah felt the strain of the siege and saw a place where the ditch, dug by the Muslims, was relatively narrow. And with huge efforts, he managed to cross the ditch. A small group of Quraysh followed him, and it was quite a reckless undertaking. One of them was immediately killed, and it was only by turning on his heels that Ikrimah himself managed to run away. Nine years after the Hijrah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returned with thousands of his companions to Mecca. The Quraysh saw them approaching and decided to leave the way open for them because they knew, they knew that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had given very strict instructions to his commanders not to open his hostilities. Ikrama and some others, however, went against the consensus of the Quraysh and attempted to block the progress of the Muslim forces. Khalid ibn al-Walid, who is now a Muslim, met and defeated them in a small engagement during which some of Ikrimah's men were killed and others ran away. Among those who escaped was Ikrimah himself. He knew his life was in danger and it was very short. Any standing or influence that Ikrimah may have had was now completely gone. There was nobody left that feared him. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, entered Mecca and gave a general pardon and amnesty to all Quraysh who entered the sacred mosque, or those who stayed in their houses or went to the house of Abu Sufyan, the paramount Quraysh leader. However, he refused to grant amnesty to a few individuals whom he specifically named. These were the people who were just so, so horrible and mean. He gave orders that they, and just them, should be killed even if they were found under the covering of the Kaaba. That is how serious it was that even the Kaaba could not save these people for they were so wrong, so evil, so bad. At the top of this list was Ikrima ibn Abi Jahl. Oh boy. Now when Ikrima learned of this, he slipped out of Mecca in disguise and headed for Yemen. His heart was so hard and he even left his wife behind. SubhanAllah, he left his wife, Um Hakim, behind. She went to the camp of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And with her was Hind bint Utbah, the wife of Abu Sufyan and the mother of Muawiyah, and about 10 other women who wanted to pledge allegiance to Islam and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What is this? Wait 
a minute, wait a minute. Ikrama Abijahal's wife wanted to accept Islam while her husband and his family were so against it? While they were so, so upset and hated Islam and the Prophet? When we return from this short commercial break, boys and girls, we'll see just what happens next and how Ikrama radiallahu anhu himself became one of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's companions. Welcome back, boys and girls. We are right in the middle of the story of Ikrama ibn Abi Jahal, the son of Abu Jahal, the meanest, most despicable enemy of Islam in the days of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. After Ikrama radiallahu anhu ran away to safety from the Sahabas, his wife and other sisters went to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. At the camp were two of the Prophet's wives, his daughter Fatima radiallahu anha, and some women of the Abdul Muttalib clan. Hin was one of those who spoke. She was veiled and ashamed of what she had done to Hamza radiallahu anhu, the Prophet's uncle, at the battle of Uhud. O Messenger of Allah, she said, Praise be to Allah who has made manifest the religion of Islam. He has chosen for himself, and I beseech you, I beg you out of the bonds of kinship to treat me well. I am now a believing woman who affirms the truth of your mission. She then unveiled herself and said, I am Hind, the daughter of Utbah, O messenger of Allah. Welcome, he said. By Allah, O prophet, continued Hind, there was not a house on earth that I wanted to destroy more than your house. Now, there is no house on earth that I would dearly wish to honor and raise in glory than yours. SubhanAllah, what a transformation. How she, just like many others, went from hating the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to now wanting to follow his methods. Um Hakim then got up and professed her faith in Islam and said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, Ikrama, my husband, has fled from you to the Yemen out of fear that you would kill him. Please grant him security, and Allah will grant you security. He is secure, promised the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So his wife, Ikrama's wife, she accepted Islam and begged for her husband's safety. Um Hakim set out immediately in search of her husband Ikrama. And accompanying her was a Greek slave. When they had gone quite far on the way, <gasps> he attacked her. But she managed to push him off until she came to a settlement of Arabs. She sought their help against him. And they tied him up and they kept him prisoner. And Um Hakim continued on her way until she finally, finally found Ikrama on the coast of the Red Sea. He was negotiating transport with another Muslim seaman who was saying to him, be pure and sincere, and I will transport you. How can I be pure, said Ikrama? Say, I testify that there is no God but Allah, and that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, Ikrama said. I am running away from this said man. I have just fled from this very same thing. He still quite adamantly disliked and feared the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. At this point, Um Hakim, who was so tired and so, so weak, came up to Ikrama and she said, Oh cousin, I have come to you from the most generous of men, the most righteous of men, the best of men, from Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I have asked him for an amnesty for you, and this he has granted. So do not destroy yourself. She was telling her husband that she had begged for forgiveness for Ikrama, that she had begged as she accepted Islam, that her husband too would be safe. Have you really spoken to him? Ikrama asked. Why, yes, I have spoken to him, and he has granted you safety. She assured him, and so he returned with her. After all, he was still on the run, and he had no other choice, really. On the way, she told him about the attempts of their Greek slave to dishonor her and hurt her. And Ikrima went directly to the Arab settlements where he lay bound and killed him. Oh, he got some revenge. At one of their resting places on the way back, Ikrima radiallahu anhu wanted to sleep with his wife. But she said no and she refused. She said, I am a Muslimah and you are a disbeliever. 
Ikrima was taken aback. But you are my wife. Living without you and without you sleeping with me is an impossible situation. As Ikrima approached Mecca, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told his companions, Ikrima ibn Abi Jahal shall come to you as a believer and a refugee. Do not insult his father. Insulting the dead causes grief to the living and does not reach the dead. You see, he knew that insulting his father had no benefit to anybody. And so, just as expected, Ikrimah and his wife came up to where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting. The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam got up and greeted him enthusiastically. Muhammad, said Ikrimah, Um Hakim has told me that you have granted me amnesty? That's right, said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are safe. To what do you invite? asked Ikrima. I invite you to testify that there is no God but Allah and that I am the servant of Allah and his messenger to establish prayer and pay the zakat and carry out all of the other obligations of Islam. By God? responded Ikrima. Remember, after all these years he believed in idols and many, many gods and goddesses and he was such an angry, angry man. And here he was, humbling himself to one man, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Allah, one God. You have only called to what is true, and you have only commanded that which is good. You lived amongst us before the start of your mission, and then you were the most trustworthy of us in speech, and the most righteous of us. And stretching forth his hands, he said, I testify that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. The Prophet ﷺ then instructed him to say, I call on Allah and those present here to witness that I am a Muslim who is a mujahid and a mujahir. Boys and girls, this meant that he accepted that he was one to struggle for Islam, and he was indeed a refugee. He indeed needed to change his way of life and humble himself and seek forgiveness from Allah. Ikrima repeated and then he said, I ask you to ask Allah for forgiveness for me for all the hostility I ever directed against you and for whatever insults I expressed in your presence and your absence. You see, he realized that Islam truly was about goodness. The Prophet ﷺ could have killed him right there or humiliated him, but he didn't. He was peaceful. The Prophet ﷺ replied with the prayer, O oh Allah, forgive him for all the hostility he has directed against me and for all the expeditions he mounted, wishing to put out your light. Forgive him for whatever he has said or done in my presence or absence to dishonor me. Ikrimah's face beamed with happiness. O oh, Messenger of Allah, I promise that whatever I have spent obstructing the way of Allah, I shall spend twice as much in his path, and whatever battles I have fought against Allah, I shall fight twice as much in his way. He knew that he had so much to be responsible for. He had done so much wrong in his life. But Allah might still forgive him? This truly must be a great religion if they would forgive someone as mean as Ikrimah. And from that day on, boys and girls, Ikrimah radiallahu anhu was committed to the mission of Islam. He was a brave horseman in the field of battle and a steadfast worshiper who had spent a lot of time in the mosques reading Quran, the book of Allah. Often, he would place the mushaf on his face and say the book of Allah, the words of my Lord. And he would cry, he would cry out of fear of Allah. You see, boys and girls, he prayed constantly that Allah would forgive him and guide him. Even after committing so much sin, there was still hope for him. Allah is the most forgiving. And this is a lesson for all of us, that no matter what we do, once we are sincere in our du'as, Allah can forgive us and clean our records of bad deeds. It's never too late to repent to Allah and see his forgiveness and his guidance. Ikrimah radiallahu anhu remained true to the pledge to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whatever battles the Muslims engaged in, from there on out he participated in them. 
and he was always in the forefront of the army. At the Battle of Yamuk, he plunged into the attack as a thirsty person after cold water on a blistering hot day. I'm sure you know the feeling. He was so eager, like he needed to go fight that battle for the sake of Allah. In one encounter in which the Muslims were under heavy attack, Ikrima penetrated deep into the ranks of the Byzantines. Khalid ibn al-Walid, whom he had used to fight with on the other side of the disbelievers, stood there next to him, rushed up to him, and he said, Don't, Ikrima, don't! Your death will be a severe blow to the Muslims. He knew that Ikrima, even though he was only Muslim for a short period of time, would be well missed. Let us carry on, Khalid, said Ikrima. Now at the peak of motivation, he was so pumped. You had the privilege of being with the Messenger of Allah before this, much longer than I. As for myself and my father, we were among his bitterest enemies. Lead me now to make up for all the bad that I have done in the past. I fought the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, on many occasions. Shall I now flee from the Byzantines? This shall never be. You see, he knew that he had so much to repent for, so much wrong to ask forgiveness for, and he was willing to sacrifice for the betterment of Islam. He called out to the Muslims and shouted, Who pledges to fight until death? 400 Muslims, including Al-Haritha ibn Hisham, responded to his call. They plunged into battle and they fought heroically without the leadership of Khalid ibn Walid. Their daring attack paved the way for a decisive Muslim victory. And when the battle was over, the bodies of three wounded Muhajirin lay sprawled on the battleground. Al Harith called for water to drink and it was brought to him. Ayash looked at him and Harith said, Give it to Ayash radiallahu anhu. By the time they got to it, Ayash radiallahu anhu breathed his last breath. When they returned to Al Harith and Ikrama, they found that they too had passed away. You see, some of the greatest companions met their match and passed away in battle. And we pray that Allah will be pleased with them all and grant them refreshments from the spring of Kalthar in paradise, in Jannah, and refreshment after which there is, no, there is thirst no more. You see, subhanAllah, boys and girls, they, they were so thirsty to do whatever was necessary for Allah. Have you ever been so thirsty to do something, so eager, you just... You just can't live without it. Well, that was them. These companions that fought for the sake of Allah and fought alongside the Prophet, they wanted nothing else but to please Allah. These brothers, the Sahabas, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were much stronger than you and I and are great role models for us. No matter what they had done before Islam, no matter how much wrong they had done, they struggled so hard to get Allah mercy and forgiveness this story is a lesson to all of us it's never too late to turn our lives around boys and girls you're all young seize the opportunity to do good and get Allah's blessings every deed no matter how big or how small matters now that about wraps it up for today and I hope you enjoyed and learned from today's story as much as I have don't forget Tune in tomorrow for more story time with me, Sophia. Assalamu alaikum.